The teenage years, a time of exploration, discovery, and let's face it, immense pressure. The weight of expectations, particularly academic, can feel crushing. Exams, especially those dreaded board exams, loom large, casting a long shadow over everything. For many teenagers, this pressure manifests as exam anxiety. It's a real and debilitating condition that affects academic performance, mental health, and overall well-being. Sleepless nights, racing heartbeats, the inability to focus. But what if there was a different way? A way to approach exams with confidence and composure, without sacrificing your mental health. This is the story of two students, Sushi and Minakshi, who navigate the choppy waters of board exams, each in their own way. Sushi and Minakshi, two bright, capable girls on the cusp of adulthood. Both are determined to succeed, but their approaches to life and exams couldn't be more different. Sushi, the picture of academic diligence, lived and breathed her studies. Friends, hobbies, family time? They all took a back seat to her relentless pursuit of academic perfection. Minakshi, on the other hand, was a whirlwind of energy and enthusiasm. She excelled in academics but also made time for her passions, basketball, painting, and spending time with her loved ones. As the dreaded board exams approached, their contrasting approaches to life and learning would be put to the ultimate test. Would Sushi's laser-like focus lead her to the top? Or would Minakshi's balanced approach prove to be the winning formula? Sushi's days were a blur of frantic activity. Up before the sun, she'd attack her textbooks with unwavering focus. Her room, once a haven of teenage dreams, was now a war room, plastered with charts, diagrams, and equations. Every spare moment was dedicated to memorizing facts, solving problems, and revising endlessly. Her parents, though concerned by her intense schedule, marveled at her dedication. They believed her unwavering focus was the key to a bright future. But beneath the veneer of academic zeal, a seed of anxiety had taken root. The fear of failure, of not living up to her own sky-high expectations, gnawed at her. The weight of those expectations, like a mountain of books threatening to topple over, pressed down on her. Each correct answer fueled her drive, but every mistake, no matter how small, felt like a catastrophic setback. I can't afford to make mistakes. Every mark counts. I have to get this right. Sushi, dear, take a break. You've been at it for hours. A short rest will do you good. I can't, Mom. There's just too much to cover. I have to keep going. Minakshi, in stark contrast, approached her studies with a lightness that bordered on casualness. She studied diligently, yes, but never at the expense of her other passions. For Minakshi, learning was a joy, not a chore. She spent her evenings at basketball practice, the rhythmic bounce of the ball a welcome counterpoint to the day's academic pursuits. Weekends were for family, filled with laughter, shared meals and heartfelt conversations. Minakshi understood the importance of these exams, but she refused to let them define her. She believed that a well-rounded life, filled with diverse experiences, was just as important as academic success. Her parents, though sometimes puzzled by her seemingly relaxed approach, trusted her implicitly. I know these exams are important, but there's more to life than just grades. Balance is key. That's right, Minakshi. Keep doing what you love. We're proud of you no matter what. Minakshi's approach to learning, filled with joy and balance, stood in stark contrast to Sushi's relentless pursuit of perfection. Both girls were on a journey, but only time would tell which path would lead to true success. Two months before the exams, the school buzzed with a nervous energy. The air crackled with anticipation, a potent mix of excitement and dread. Sleep has become a luxury I can't afford. My meals are hurried, my mind always racing ahead to the next chapter. The next practice test. Sushi, now a recluse in her self-imposed academic exile, doubled down on her studies. Minakshi, meanwhile, stuck to her routine. I study diligently, but I also make sure to carve out time for my passions, for the things that bring me joy and keep me grounded. As the countdown to the exams began, Sushi's anxiety reached fever pitch. Minakshi, on the other hand, faced the looming exams with a calm confidence, her balanced approach a source of strength and resilience. The stage was set for a battle of wills, a test not just of academic prowess,
but of two very different approaches to life itself. Weeks melted away, each one bringing the dreaded exams closer. The atmosphere at school grew thick with tension. Every conversation with my parents feels like an interrogation. Their inquiries about my progress, their reminders about the importance of these exams, only amplify the pressure cooker atmosphere that has enveloped my life. Sushi, her world now shrunk to the confines of her study table, felt the pressure build with each passing day. Her already rigorous schedule became even more demanding. Sleep, a distant memory, was sacrificed at the altar of endless revision. The once familiar textbooks, now worn and dog-eared from countless hours of study, seemed to mock her with their vastness. Minakshi, amidst the escalating tension, remained a beacon of calm. Her days were still a carefully orchestrated blend of study and leisure, each activity allotted its specific time and importance. Basketball practice is my sanctuary. The rhythmic thud of the ball, the camaraderie of my teammates, these are my anchors, reminding me that there's more to life than just exams. Weekends were still dedicated to family, to laughter-filled lunches and shared stories. These moments, filled with warmth and unconditional love, were her fuel, replenishing her reserves of energy and reminding her of the unwavering support system she had. I study diligently, my natural intelligence allowing me to absorb information quickly and efficiently. But I also know when to step away, to give my mind a break, to allow the information to settle and solidify. Minakshi's balanced approach continued to be her strength, a testament to the power of finding and maintaining one's rhythm, even in the face of mounting pressure. As the days dwindled down to a precious few, cracks began to appear in Sushi's carefully constructed facade of control. The pressure, once a motivating force, was now a crushing weight, threatening to break her. The smallest setbacks, a forgotten formula, a poorly worded sentence in a practice essay, sent me spiraling into a vortex of self-doubt and anxiety. Her dreams were haunted by visions of exam papers filled with red ink, of the disappointed faces of her parents, of her own future crumbling before her eyes. Her once impeccable handwriting, a testament to her meticulous nature, became cramped and shaky, a physical manifestation of her inner turmoil. My appetite vanished, replaced by a constant knot of anxiety in my stomach. Her parents, oblivious to the inner turmoil raging within their daughter, continued to encourage her, their words a source of both comfort and pressure. You're doing great, Sushi. Just a little more and you'll be ready. We believe in you. They failed to see the warning signs, the subtle cues that their daughter was teetering on the brink. Minakshi, with her innate ability to find balance, sailed through the final days before the exams with remarkable composure. Her confidence stemmed not from an arrogant belief in her own infallibility, but from a deep-seated trust in her preparation and her ability to handle whatever challenges came her way. I studied diligently, absorbed the information, and now I'm ready to face the exams head-on. The fear of failure was present, as it was for every student, but it did not cripple her. Instead, it fueled her determination to do her best. Exams are just one chapter in the much larger story of my life. The day before the first exam, while Sushi remained locked in her room, a prisoner of her own anxieties, Minakshi took a long walk in the park, enjoying the warm sunshine and the gentle breeze. She needed this time to clear her head, to center herself, to remind herself of her broader journey. Remember, Minakshi, you've prepared well. Just stay calm and do your best. As the sun began its descent, casting long shadows across the park, Minakshi returned home, a sense of calm washing over her. The day arrived, the culmination of years of hard work and sacrifice. The first exam awaited. Sushi, it's time to wake up. At Sushi's home, tension filled the air. Her mother offered words of encouragement. Thanks, mom, I'm just not hungry. Sushi picked at her breakfast. The car ride to school was a blur. Sushi sat in the back seat, lost in thought. I can't believe it's finally here. The sight of other students did little to ease her nerves. She felt a surge of panic rising within her. You'll do great, Sushi. Just breathe. The day of reckoning had begun.
The examination hall, with its rows of identical desks and the imposing figure of the invigilator pacing the aisles, felt like a battleground. The air was thick with tension, punctuated by the rustle of exam papers and the nervous coughs of her fellow students. Sushi sat at her assigned desk, her body rigid, her hands trembling slightly as she took a deep breath, trying to quell the rising tide of panic within her. The exam paper, filled with questions that had once seemed familiar, now appeared alien and insurmountable. Come on, focus, you know this. As she scanned the first question, her mind went blank. All the formulas, all the dates, all the information she had painstakingly committed to memory seemed to have vanished into thin air. Panic tightened its grip. Her heart raced, her palms grew sweaty, and she could feel a cold sweat break out on her forehead. Why can't I remember anything? Across the aisle, Minakshi, her face a picture of calm concentration, tackled the exam paper with quiet confidence. She had prepared well, trusted her instincts, and was determined to do her best, without succumbing to the pressure that seemed to be crushing those around her. The exam, while challenging, held no fear for her. Just take it one question at a time. She approached each question methodically, drawing on the knowledge she had accumulated through months of consistent effort and a balanced approach to studying. The time flew by. This is going well. Stay focused. The scratching of pens filled the air, a steady rhythm that was oddly soothing. Minakshi, her mind sharp and focused, navigated the exam paper with a sense of purpose, her confidence growing with each question she answered. As she penned the last sentence of her final essay, a sense of accomplishment washed over her. The following days were a blur of exhaustion and anticipation. The pressure cooker atmosphere of the exam hall dissipated, replaced by a strange sense of emptiness, a void left by the absence of the constant pressure that had consumed their lives for so long. Sleep, elusive as ever, offered no escape from the relentless self-recrimination that plagued my waking hours. Sushi, still reeling from her meltdown in the exam hall, retreated further into herself. Minakshi, her inherent optimism undimmed, bounced back with characteristic resilience. I rejoined my basketball team, the familiar rhythm of the game a welcome distraction from the anxieties of the past weeks. The wait for the results was agonizing. Every conversation, every family gathering, was tinged with an undercurrent of tension, the unspoken question of their performance hanging heavy in the air. The once clear distinction between Sushi's world of relentless study and Minakshi's balanced approach seemed to blur, both girls now united by a shared sense of anticipation and dread. The long-awaited day arrived, the day when the fruits of their labor, the tangible measure of their worth, would be revealed. The board exam results were finally out. My hands trembled as I held the crisp sheet of paper, my name printed in bold letters at the top. Whispers and gasps echoed through the school corridors as students ripped open envelopes, their faces a mixture of elation, relief, and despair. Sushi's eyes darted across the page, scanning the numbers that held the key to her future. 95%, an exceptional score, a testament to my unwavering dedication and countless hours of study. At Minakshi's home, the atmosphere was one of joyous celebration. 93%, that's amazing, Minakshi. We're so proud of you. Yet amidst the jubilation, a shadow lingered. Sushi, her face pale, stared at her scorecard, her expression unreadable. 95%. A score that would have been a cause for celebration just weeks ago now felt like a crushing defeat. The relentless pressure she had placed on herself, the countless sacrifices she had made, the sheer terror that had gripped her during the exams, all of it seemed to culminate in this moment of bitter disappointment. The fear of failure, the very fear that had driven me to such extremes, had become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Her parents, though overjoyed with her results, sensed her unease. Sweetheart, you've done so well. We're so proud of you. Their attempts to console her, to remind her of her achievement, fell on deaf ears. Sushi, lost in a maze of self-doubt and recrimination, was unable to share in their joy. I had achieved the success I had so desperately craved, yet it brought me no solace. The scorecard, once a symbol of her ambition and drive, now felt like a heavy chain, a constant reminder of her perceived failure.
Meenakshi, surrounded by her jubilant family and friends, felt a surge of gratitude wash over her. I faced my fears, stayed true to myself, and emerged stronger. Her success was not solely defined by numbers. It was the culmination of hard work, resilience, and balance. True success lies in the journey, not the score.